Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the U-chart using Minitabs version 20. The uh, U-chart is used to track defects over time. It's used to uh, show common cause and special cause variation uh, in a process. The uh, data that you're looking at here, I, I give you a brief background. Uh, this data is from a fictitious Lean Six Sigma project that we provide as a benchmark to our green and black belts. Uh, in this project, a company called Peanut Butter and Jelly Inc. or PBJ Inc. who makes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for kids in schools all over the continental US uh, is experiencing increased operating costs in the production of PBJs, and they are not sure why. Uh, a team of belts are assigned to the, to the um, project to improve the process. Uh, in this case, we're in the control phase of, of this, this project. Uh, and you'll see here, uh, we have two columns. Uh, we have a column called JY bottom total. This is basically the amount of the jelly that is applied to the bottom piece of, uh, of bread. Uh, and we have a QA department who is doing uh, um, statistical samples uh, to find defects. And uh, these are the amount of defects that we find in those subcomponents, okay? So those subcomponents are a, a part of a larger process uh, to make the whole sandwich. So we're we're looking at, in this case at a defect. Um, so we are going to track these uh, defects with a chart called the uh, U-chart. So uh, we are gonna go into the assistant. Uh, the assistant is a, a mini tabs tool to really make uh, stats accessible and uh, kind of easy for us. All right, and we uh, teach this uh, specifically to our green belts. So we open this up, open the um, uh, control chart dialog box up here, uh, and we get a good flow chart telling us, you know, which chart do we want to use? In this case, we want to use uh, the P chart, or I'm sorry, the U chart, because we have attribute data uh, and we're looking at defects per unit. Okay, as you can see here, we, uh, uh, I have already filled this out. The uh, number of defects column uh, that we're looking at uh, is the actual defects column. Okay, uh, we've got two choices on how are your subgroups defined. Uh, we can pick constant size for all subgroups or column of subgroup sizes. Uh, in this case, we pick column of subgroup sizes the reason that we do that is uh, because uh, let's say, for example, that uh, each one of these rows are a shift, a shift of this bottom piece of bread, you know, having jelly applied to it. So every shift, uh, there, there might be a different amount uh, of these subcomponents that are being made. So. Uh, in order to, to, to evaluate this, we, we need to have that column and actually catalog the amount that were made. Uh, so we, we know how many defects were made in that, uh, the kind of the proportion of defects to the amount of uh, subcomponents that are uh, created. Now, let's say that we had uh, a policy where every 200 subcomponents that were made uh, that we are then going to catalog the amount of defects. All right, in that case, we would have a constant uh, size for all subgroups. So I would do something like putting in that constant subgroup size. Uh, but we don't have that in this case. We have uh, this is per shift. And uh, again, in those shifts, we can make a, a different amount of those uh, of those um, components. 
All right, it also asks us to determine the control limits and the center line, right? So um, we're gonna, we are going to pick estimate from the data. So in this case, it's actually using the data uh, to determine what the control limits and the center line is or are. Um, and as we add new data, it, it updates those control limits and that center line. Now, a lot of companies decide to use, uh, use known values. Uh, there's benefit to doing this, but uh, most companies fall into a trap with this uh, in that they, they set these limits and center line and then they forget them. So uh, these limits and center line over time do not represent what the true limits and true center line are. Uh, so we're not gonna do that. We are going to estimate from uh, the data. Um, also, uh, what's beneficial about the assistant in, uh, in doing or performing this U chart is it gives us the ability uh, to see and to omit special clause variation. All right. The reason that we may want to do that is um, to see what the true standard deviation and the true mean is of the process without these outliers uh, skewing it. Now, it's uh, if you omit these, but you don't actually uh, do something about these, you know, go investigate, understand why they happen, then then it's pretty counterproductive uh, to to using this chart. All right, these uh, out of control points could point to the actual uh, problem that we may need to fix. All right, in this case, it's it's uh, the control stage, so. It, this is going to going to or it could possibly point to some issues that we need to uh, uh, we need to rectify. But I, I, I'm uh, not going to pull these out or I'm not going to omit these. So I'm going to keep them in. We'll hit OK or click OK. Um, we'll come down to the report card. The report card just gives us good information about uh, the uh, graph that we're looking at, uh, control chart that we're looking at. Uh, uh, green check marks tell us that, you know, these attributes are good, that they have a, a good number of subgroups, good subgroup size. Um, it, it's also telling us that we could have a problem with sub, uh, stability. Uh, and I'll show you where that actually shows up in, in uh, later graphs. So here is the stability reports. All right, so this just basically says that we have unstable data and it, it tells us which rule we have broken here. Um, to, uh, rule number one, outside of the control limits. It shows us some examples of uh, what could be unstable data uh, that we can compare to our actual data set to see you know, if, if it fits any of those um, uh, any of those scenarios. Uh, we have two points, again, that are unstable. Uh, these unstable points, we teach our green belts, these are signals, all right? They, these could signal something that, um, that in, in an analysis would lead us to, uh, could lead us to, you know, a potential problem. Now, in the control phase, this uh, could lead the SME uh, to find out something that is abnormal, uh, ad abnormal that is happening in the process. All right. So in the control phase, uh, one of the names for these these red dots is called an, uh, an assignable cause, because this visual tool, this control chart, should be at the uh, uh, on the floor level. All right. The SME should be able to see this in real time. And, and when he or she sees these red dots, uh, they should be able to react to, to that, uh, to make some change in the process or to assign it so that, you know, we can do, do some investigation as to why these happen. Okay, so uh, again, uh, this uh, brief tutorial was on the uh, U chart in many tabs of version 20. I hope you have uh, a little more information about how to use this U-chart. Um, you can go to uh, minitab.com, 
uh, and search for the uh, U-chart and, and uh, it, it will give you a lot more detailed information. So uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to, to contact me at uh, my email address, which is kclay at sigmadsi.com. Uh, I will put that information uh, in this uh, below the video. So uh, again, I'd, I hope you have uh, a wonderful day and thank you.